Hello everybody and welcome to tonight's coverage. Second season of the NASCAR Class C McCauley Setup Shop Big Series. This evening, we're excited to be bringing you top foot action for the weekly straight the field race for my racing's virtual Homestead Miami Speedway in Homestead, Florida. Going Entertainment is here to bring you action for all types of racing. For the weekly Pass Friday Series, no matter what you're racing, we can bring the action to life. My name's Justin Prince. Alongside the booth tonight is part-time Arkham Menard series driver, Brendan Lester, with Bradley Cooper producing, working the controls as our producer, using cameras provided by Dougie Beer. We're reaching the midway point of the season, and believe it or not, Braden, it's only the last mile and a half of the campaign. The pressure's on if you prefer to run on the speedways, because after tonight, just one fits that category, and that last of those is two miles. Yeah, it's a real interesting combination we got. We got two short tracks, two super speedways, and Auto Club, and Phoenix is, as you can call it intermediate, you can call it short track, but six very unique tracks we got coming up here, especially with the iRacing Super Speedway. We're going to see a lot of torn up cars, and with no faster pairs for any drivers in any of these races, we're going to see a lot of people going home sad, I feel like. In turn, we'll see how tonight plays out with Homestead Miami Speedway. After all, the championship standings approaching the midway point of the season also look very tight up towards the top. Dean Grumman, so far, 10.99. Point tally, 1,099 specifically. Snyder and Hall amongst the top three. All three of those drivers are part of tonight's field. Dakota Lawn, Devin O'Connor, Chase Cabery, all in the four-digit club. And just Matello, just two points up in a battle amongst the top ten with Brandon Chiburko inside the top eight. Tuckness and Misevich, the top 10 coming in. But in turn, Homestead gets ready to see how drivers handle the multiple lanes to work with. Brandon, you can rip the top here we've seen in the past to gain speed down the straightaways. But a lot of drivers like to run the bottom here because the tire saving especially. What can we expect to see tonight for the sporty lapper? Yeah, like you just mentioned, a lot of grooves, a lot of lanes to work with here around the virtual Homestead Miami Speedway. They're looking at 1.5 miles, about average for your intermediate track. It's not your typical cookie cutter, though. So we're located in Homestead, Florida. This track celebrating its 28th year opened in 1995 on both an oval and a road course layout. Track is symmetrical with progressive banking. You get a little steeper around the top with 20 degrees and the 18 towards the bottom. Tower saving, very, very important. This uh surface is very abrasive will eat your tires in a matter of no time you expect to see drivers saving for about 10 to 15 laps maybe a little bit longer with how abrasive the surface really is and we've only averaged about 3.4 cautions for the sff races and this season so they're not really relying on too many cautions maybe to come down and get a new tire it's going to be interesting and your expected truck hopefully be a lot faster than everyone else in the run if you're able to save some tires and you're also looking at 46,000 spectators We'll see how tonight fares out for the drivers in front of those virtual spectators here tonight. As qualifying has already come to a close, let's take a look how we'll start tonight from the virtual Homestead Miami Speedway on iRacing. Qualifying already complete for 24 entrants. Ryan Andrew on the pole tonight for this 4274 SOM. Andre Castro starts alongside tonight. Nexus Esports driver John Hall starts in third. A home race for him, in fact. Yakov Kirasov starts in fourth position. The Russian iRacer starts in front of Justin Patello as he looks for a thousand iRacing wins. David Werner rounds out your top six tonight, Braden. Dean Brum at your points leader going to be rolling off seventh there on the row number four. Nathan Jump on his outside number 19 Ford machine. Scott Rickard and Jacob Schneider going to make up row number five there, ninth and tenth respectively. And Christopher Heller and Kyle Bowling are going to be 11th and 12th respectively. The next row features an interesting pairing. You have Dalton Cowden, one of the Division I competitors, but one of the top drivers in Division II makes its appearance in SOF competition tonight. Lucas Lodato starts off inside the top 14. Joy Savage is saw inside Brady Powers. Then it's Wyatt Ham. who will be started alongside Jeffrey McConey. The rest of your starting grid features Jason Jacoby alongside Hunter Brittle, Jonathan Hernandez, the last drop on time, Derek Winter, Cole Pocken, and Brandon Chiburko. Your entries here from Homestead, Miami. So 24 trucks on a fairly solid racetrack temp of 99 degrees Fahrenheit tonight. 40 laps to battle it out. We'll see how tonight fares out with just two tire sets available in the pits. Your keys to win this one, Braden. 
Uh, tire saving is going to be a big, big key, especially as we talked about. You know, only a couple cautions we've averaged so far, especially looking at Vegas last week. Only one caution in the SOF race in Texas, which is track very similar to this. Zero caution. So you can't really rely on cautions to come down and get new tires on whatever you want. I think saving tires, whoever can save and not really run up front most of the race, but just be towards the front and have grip there at the end. It's going to be who is the one in victory lane tonight. But all set to get underway for tonight's action. Kona Esports driver of Ryan Andrew in control on the inside. And it's the NASCAR Xfinity Series driver, Andre Castro, on the outside from New York State. Green flag waits up at the stand. We're underway from Miami. things off but look at the charge from Jacob Snyder he started 10 he's already looking for the top five after ripping the top both sides of the track Snyder there you mentioned shot out of a rocket got a real good dump there when it turned one it was only a couple inches off the wall and then followed that momentum down the back stretch almost got into the back bumper of Castro I believe there and through three and four with the, only the really one ripping the fence trying to save as many tires as he can just quick and also trying to save tires. I think Castro and Schneider are trying to be some contenders here late in the race. Side by side between Snyder and J-Bo. And we were talking a fair bit about J-Bo coming into tonight. The well-known strainer, also somebody keep an eye on in many of these SOF races. Two wins away from 1,000 on the guy racing career heading into this one. And speaking of exciting, uh, Yakov Kersenov and Nathan Jump were side by side and almost three wide coming out of turn two. They were Scott Rickard for the 10th spot. So these drivers, they're only doing three, four laps into this race and they're not really holding anything back. They are going all out. And this might come back to hurt them that they're quick. They're trying to make up as many spots as they can. If I'm someone like Nathan Jump who's been side by side or almost three wide for the first four laps of this race, I'd almost want to give the spots up. I'm stuck in the bottom. I'm just wearing my tires. And that might really come to hurt and bite me in the butt in about 25 laps here. This goes great. And it's so critical to be able to save the tires here where we're talking coming in. Of course, you have experience at the Craftsman Truck Series level on the dirt side, more so at Knoxville, but also made several starts on the Arkham and Art Series this campaign. We've seen a lot of drivers slip and slide on tracks like this. In terms of that context, how would you compare for the real world to virtual at a track like Homestead on this field? Yeah, I've never personally ran here in real life, but you know, I've ran out of Charlotte, which I feel like is fairly close, especially with how abrasive it seems. It doesn't seem like that on iRacing, but trust me, if you get even a half of an inch of a tire out of a lane, your entire corner is destroyed, and if you don't spin out, then you're really not in a good position down the whole back straight away, and you can easily lose three, four, even five spots, depending on how tight you are. It's about saving tires, especially with Arca. You don't have unlimited tire sets like the Cup or the Xfinity Series. And Dean Brummett, we saw about, got turned off the front nose of not to come out for, but saving tires and hitting your line, and hitting your mark is key to success at a track like this. And you want to save your tires as much as you can. If you mess that line up, as Jake of Snyder about got moved in a the wall there with jump, as I just mentioned, they were side by side about to destroy each other. You want to make, you don't want to miss your mark. You don't want to destroy your tires, especially this early in the race, with how quick of a race it is coming out only 40 laps. No three wide amongst them. The jump, one of the division two tries to work. Snyder sees David Werner up on the wall and sign him. I don't think there was a calm possibly for the three wide for one of those drivers. They were offset. Yeah, David Warner was not too happy about that move. Got the run off the floor. Sent the outside of Snyder, who's been pretty aggressive since before the start of the green flag. We saw him go from 10th to 5th there real early on. And you have to wonder, did he go too early? Has he warmed up his tires? He was up there kind of comfortably in the fifth spot, and now just the past couple corners, he got passed by Dean Brummett, and now four or five car lengths ahead. Same with David Warner, passed him coming out of four, then again, three wide, there was a little contact there, but he's kind of making a little bit of a, a cushion uh, 
uh, Schneider is yeah. against the cars in front of him. So it's kind of interesting to see, has he burned stuff up too quick? Is he starting to fall? Keep it on the pace marks. Made the jump, mind you, still running where he started off. Right now the pace fall off about three tenths of a second on the average. And when it comes to drivers like Nathan Jump, they are battling for the division points. And the overall points is harder when you're in, say, Division 2, because you still need to make the SOF, but you also, in turn, have the back foot in terms of your I rating coming in, where you're probably in the 3,000s to start the year. You need to be above about 3,500 to be in Division 1. And you were going to go back to the battle of the lead here. Andre Castro, who started on the outside row and uh, of the front row. And Ryan Andrew started all the way in P number one there. I know, real, real surprising for Andrew qualifying up front. They've been pretty much the, uh, bumper to bumper most of this run. Andrew got a little bit of a jump, and Castro kind of closed in up on him. They're running pretty much identical lines. I noticed Castro has a little bit sour of an entry. It's about a quarter of a car length lower. And then you see Ryan Andrew get a good run off by running just about half a car higher up. But you see it comes into the whole, sorry, you know, go hard or early and crash safe tires. Do I want to have something you know, there at the end or do I want to rely on a caution? You can go up front like Ryan Andrew. I'm not saying he's not saving his tires up, but if he's going 110% you know, for the first 10, 15 laps of this race, you mentioned we're already at 3, 4 tenths to fall off and it's just going to get worse and worse from this point on out. That's the quarterway mark. And getting back to the discussion, you see some of those drivers side by side, such as Snyder and Cowden, for example. That's going to be the critical part as caution flag is out of the back of the field. Our first yellow flag. And it's trouble at the very back for Lucas Ladato. He was running 16th. And Brandon Chaburko gives him some help for the first caution. Now, the Dado kind of went into turn one. Uh, I don't know if he's kind of got out of whack, but he slowed up quite a bit, and that allowed the uh, number 12 of Chuberka to kind of get into him. Chuberka had a heck of a run off of turn four, made up a lot of ground on the Dado, and I don't know if he misjudged it, if the Dado backed up a little bit running the top. Uh, they were running the middle, which is kind of an unusual line here for uh, Homestead, unless you were forced in, which they were three wide going down the front stretch, but very unfortunate for Lucas and Dado. Thankfully, he didn't really hit anything, and nobody hit him, so his car and truck should be A-OK -okay for the most part. You've been in contact as well to the wall in the midst of the checkup there. That was Derek Winter. But we're under caution, under the yellow, in fact, for one of the rare times this season, it feels like the SOF race, but it allows drivers the chance to get themselves on some fresh rubber. Here comes the pit cycle. First green, first caution flag. Pit stops of the nine to the first time in a while. That's going to be interesting to see if anyone tries anything differently. I can't imagine anyone not taking four tires here. I love your someone like, you know, Kersenov or, you know, Brady Powers running in the, the mid, the high teens, or even Jeffrey McConey for, for that matter. You want to try something different, only taking two tires. You know you're good on fuel to the end no matter what. Just taking two right sides and maybe trying to get some cheap track position. It might be too early on and you might destroy your left sides. And We might see something like that come to play here and, you know, if we have a caution 20, 30 laps. But I can't see anyone here not taking four tires. Based on the tallies, everybody took four tires there. Ryan Andrew wins the race off pit road. Andre Castro, John Hall, and just Patel of the top four. Dean Brumman finished off fifth in that race. I was about to say when it comes to Andre Castro, though, he's amongst the drivers with real world experience in the field itself tonight. He is somebody that is actually one of the better eye racers in the history of the platform. Multiple times winning special events. Multiple times getting Team USA scholarships and making the finalist list for over the course of five years. Multiple times a part of the NASCAR Women Euro Series recruitment program. Won its eSports championship in 2020. Also won the McConaughey Setup Shop a Little 500 a couple of years ago. Was a grand finalist in the Lotrek McLaren G Challenge last year. Also is currently on top of running with Jesse Awuji's NASCAR Xfinity Series program running USF 2000 competition with Future Star Racing after picking up the Team USA scholarship two years ago. He's a very busy driver. Andre Castro is your thoughts on how he's been in his career from what you've seen. 
And he is pulling an absolute show tonight, and he does pretty good in the real life track too. So it's pretty neat to see someone like Andre come down here and you know spend a lot of time with us in the SOF races. And hopefully he can give Ryan Andrew a run for his money. We've seen them pretty close most of the night. Their best laps are only four hundredths of a second off each other. The entire field is very very tight. But when you put Cost or uh, Castro and Andrew next to each other, they look pretty uh, similar in terms of pace and speed tonight. Small edge going the way towards Castro by a couple of hundreds in the past 10 laps for those curious. But your biggest mover coming up to the restart. Brandon Jaburko once more up nine. Jonathan Schwartz is also up eight positions. Keep it on them as well as Cowden who's up six. Just about all set to get back underway. Heading to the restart zone. Andrew in control this time. Pace cars off. 26 laps to go. We're back underway. A good launch to the bottom. Andrew got a fantastic launch there. Got a little help from the number two of John Hall. Gave him a little bump and kind of shot him out. They're three wide there for second, for a split second. We're going to see number 18 of David Warner. Only a millimeter, if not less, off that wall. Kind of got forced up there. They're going to be four wide there with Cowden, Rickard, and Nathan Jump. Oh. I think Nathan Jump's been about four wide this entire race. Look at Warner, though, cutting to the inside of Brummett. j Bo tries to keep it on the outside, but David Warner who hit the outside wall during the last run, during three wide battling, charges back up inside the top four, starts up the first intense battle up on the bottom side. They're still kind of three wide. I don't think, like I mentioned, Nathan Jump has pretty much been in traffic this entire race. He has fresh tires. He's kind of had a chance to calm down, cool himself, and you'll get a different mindset, different mentality. And I don't think he's really changed a whole lot. Now he's looking to make the move on eight on um, Scott Record. He does possibly going into turn three here. He's also got Jacob Schneider. We were talking about earlier, only eight points off of Dean Brum. He's trying to make up some ground. We kind of saw him saw a rocket at the beginning, and now he kind of was fading a little bit and falling all the way back into 10th, kind of where he started. So you saw him you know, go real hard his first five or six laps, kind of burn stuff up. Maybe he realized it. Same thing with Nathan Jump. You have a chance to kind of cool, uh, cool down and reset yourself. Got for Thunderbolt, so it's moving forward. Jump. Now under attack by Snyder. Snyder nearly made contact as he went middle. But here comes Traburco drifting around the racetrack. Remember, last time out of Las Vegas, he burned up his tires long run. He's not afraid to push once again. I mean, do you remember, he just got into action with Lodato, you know, four or five laps ago, going to turn one. So that obviously is not facing him much as he's looking to take the temp spot here from. Jacob Schneider, and actually maybe going for ninth or low contact error on the number 19 machine of Nathan Jump. Had to check up already. And here comes the attempt to the pump. He is not afraid to make contact, don't forget. They're two by two by two here for this 10th spot. This is a battle for ninth or 10th around there. It's already heating up. Jaburko kind of at the front of it, trying to make up some lost ground. I don't think he has a whole lot of damage, if not any at all, from the contact with that data a couple of laps ago. For the lead. Side by side, Castro able to get alongside Andrew, nearly getting the pass done on the poke. Can he get the job done? Andrew with a huge squeeze. Andrew shuffled back up the track. Got Castro side by side of the line. You give it left to Castro actually, not by much. Only one thousandth of a second in front of Andrew there. As they're gonna be side by side going into one. Castro with a little bit of an advantage through one and two, but Ryan Andrew's gonna get a run off the corner, try to make it side by side going into three. Air contact a couple times already as part of the squeezes. First generation Colombian American on the bottom. Ryan Andrew, the Bacone Esports driver, giving another squeeze. No give and take from either side to the halfway. I'm not going to lie. I don't like it one bit. Both the drivers are going 100%, which you can't blame them. I just mentioned we're halfway into this race, but you still have 20 hard, hard laps to go on this very race surface. So I wouldn't be surprised if these two start to burn stuff up quick. You see someone like Cowden or you know, Hall or Warner running those third, fourth, and fifth spots, kind of make up some ground. They're only about four or five times behind this battle for the lead as Andrew's looking to take it once more and going through three and four. Another squeeze back from Castro. Here we rubbing doors and paint once again. 
And keep in mind, if they keep scrapping, Dalton Cowden is now one of the fastest trucks on the racetrack. He's picked up an hour a couple tenths now to close into this fight in the 17 right behind him. And they've been side by side for three, four laps now. Neither one of them's really giving up any room to the other. If this doesn't end up in a wreck, it's definitely going to end up with some burnt rubber, and these tires are not liking it. As you see the number 14 of Cowden, Dalton Cowden, kind of started coming to picture, making up more and more time. They just mentioned one of the fast trucks on the track. So wouldn't it be surprised if we see him start to get his nose in and try to get a step in this battle? But I need to start getting the rhythm down here within half a second of the gap. Andrew's still running the bottom. 33.8 and 33.9 for the race leaders. 34 flats for most of the field. Near uh, contact Don is it? Go Don ahead. Cowden was the actually fastest truck that last time by. Tied with a 33.851 with Nathan Jump. So, Cowden, you can really see only four or five car links now uh, within three tenths of taking the lead of these two, uh, of Castro and Ryan, as neither one wants to really give or take. They're basically pretty much side by side. This has been a dead nuts even battle for about the last four or five laps, with them only really overall losing on number three running the car of Cowden. Still another squeeze, and now they're touching. Castro gets some contact from Andrew off the number. Both holding on to it, though. The give and take seems to be shrinking more and more per lap here. This, again, has been side by side since the restart. And John Hall in the fourth spot, you want to talk about getting shot out of a cannon, he did a 33.771 at last time by and just backed up with a 33.9. Still the fast truck on the track. We're up there running by the wall, trying to chase down the third place of Cowden. Now Warner trying to make it three wide, possibly for a split second year for third. And this is kind of your Andrew and your Castro. Do you like to see this? Do you like to see these guys third and fourth battling and all out? You saw them make up a huge ton of time. They were, you know, five, six tenths back, and now they're only within half a second. So this battle for first is going to heat up real quick after we get to about 15 to go here. Castro, meanwhile, fully single filed out, but now Hall wants to go. One of the first times we've seen Hall in this time slot this season. He's amongst those, keep in mind, of the top five of the point standings. He's been making a name for himself this season, a part of Nexus Esports, a part of their resurgence when it comes to the RTP scene. Talk about Cowden running the top, only a couple feet or so off the wall, a lot higher than most of the other trucks right now on the track. Trying to make up time down the straightaway, side by side with John Hall. We just mentioned John Hall on the fast track, or trucks on the track, and Cowden Wright was pretty quick before the match. They are now chasing, and only with a truck is on the outside of Ryan Andrews. They're going to Cowden, try and take the second spot here, possibly for a split second. Maybe get a big run down this back straightaway. Well, it looks like Andrew starting to drift around off the corners on the bottom. No space for Cowden to be able to send it inside quite yet. Cowden's got the runs. The problem is getting alongside is going to be the big question mark, Braden. Yeah, we talked about Castro and Andrew, that they were side by side for five, six laps. They're going to see him start to really burn their stuff up. They've only been, uh, as I say, that Castro was the quickest that last time by. But there were five or six laps there where they were two or three tenths slower than guys like Cowden and John Hall. So they've really caught up now. Trying to take the second spot from Ryan Andrew as he is defending like his life depends on it, which is, might be the battle for the lead. If we can see Cowden get to the bottom and get by Andrew here, I don't think we'll have too much of a problem chasing down Castro. Trying to make the slide for second. Can't yet. 12 laps to go. Cowden trying to make the bottom mark. Now here comes the run back as Castro loses ground this time. Fastest out of the three was Cowden. No move yet as Hall now moves to the top and here comes Warner again. Uh, David Warner was actually the fastest truck that last time by by almost a tenth, especially oh. when you look at Look at Hall. Wow. I don't think it's going to end too happy for anyone involved. John Hall with a heck of a move there. He brought it up out of going to the three. Shot three wide on the bottom pretty much. And he's looking to take second with that same move. It's kind of trying to hang on on the bottom of Ryan Andrew. Double. Andrew. Dalton Cowden has had contact. Apparently, Dalton Cowden's motor shut off in the corner. And Warner hit him in the bumper. 
No caution, we stay green. An absolute technical fault for the 14. That was a shame too, because we just talked about David Warner with a fast truck on track by almost a tenth. And now that's probably going to give a big gap to this top three. You're looking at almost a half second, if not more, between your top three and fourth place. David Warner, hopefully with not a whole lot of damage. I just talked about Dean Brummett leading this championship is now sliding into the fifth spot. Bravo, caution flag is out. Towards the back of the field, Jason Jacoby and Christopher Heller collide. And we're under caution. Joey Masevich also involved. And now it gets interesting with under 10 laps to go. And discussion building on the radio, this is the incident. Yeah, I don't know if Howard just didn't have a right front left, really, or just sent it in there way too hot, uh, but he went in on the bottom of Masowitz there and basically stuffed him in the wall and just said Kobe nowhere to really go. Pawkin, Cole Pawkin almost got part of that, but Joey's going to have uh, a right to be mad there. I mean, he's kind of minding his own business, and all of a sudden, here comes the truck running the bottom right into his left front, stuffing them both in the wall. Savage with damage, nowhere for Jacoby to go in the stack up as well. But now that strategy idea you had on two tires may come into play. Have you talked about that? It was way too early to take it earlier, but now we might see someone like Jacoby, like McConey, like you know, Whiteham, the guys running you know, the bottom 20s, high teens here, try and make up some lost ground. You know, these guys don't have a quick repair. I don't think anyone's really blown up. But also give someone like David Warner or we were just talking about Cowden who had a technical difficulty. He was running inside the top five real strong, real fast. You're able to come down, you're able to get new tires, you're able to reset yourself. We talked about this with the last restart. You're able to mentally reset yourself is a big thing for these drivers and go out here. Now with only four or five laps to go, when the green flag comes out, you're going to be able to go as hard as you want. Race up pit road. First out is Castro. Check that hall with two tires. Four for Castro on back. And, well, you predicted possibly Jacoby staying out even though he was just in the crash. Guess who just stayed out to take the lead on 20 lap old tires? Oh, it's not snowing, you guys. This is going to be very interesting. Uh, John Hall won the race, like I said, took two tires there. He's going to be on the outside of Jason Jacoby. Just got in that wreck. He might come down this time by, I don't think he really has a reason to. If he was saving most of that run, his nose doesn't look too badly damaged near his right front. If he's able to get a good jump here and they wreck behind him, he might be able to hold the lead and, you know, for a green white checker. It's going to be lucky, but Jason Jacoby might be able to actually walk away with, with a cheap win here. We'll see how this fares out. Pardon me there. As pardon us, because... Don't forget, tonight's brought to you in part by McConey Setup Shop, the home for setups, paint schemes, coaching, broadcasting, event promotion, and more on the iRacing service. Scriptures available as low as $8 a month. McConey Setup Shop, the official setup shop of NASCAR and the official series sponsor, the NASCAR C Fix Series. And as we get ready for the restart, one thing to note, schedule proposals are open for the new season for 2021 season one. Keep in mind, since it's not following the iRacing schedule until the later stages, the community gets to vote what they want to be on the schedule. Some of the favorites, Kern County, Wild Will Springs, and several more proposed already from the community. It's going to be real interesting. You have Ryan, Andrew, and Andrew Castro. These two were the front of house for most of this race. They've, the only these two have led laps. Now we're going to get someone definitely different, different here. we got John Hall on two tires on that side, and we have Jason Jacoby on the inside on 20 lap old tires. They get they go green. Green flag is out. Tire spin as Jacoby clears. Hall trying to block three lanes at once. And this is about to get wild with six laps to go. Hall stuck on the bottom. Here comes Ryan Andrew using Jacoby as a pick for the lead. Andrew with a run off the corner, going to get to the outside of Jacoby. Going to try to clear him, going through three and four here. Double! Fine. 
Brash at the back, it's the big one. Here's an off and several more spin. Jeffrey McConey around, Wyatt Ham around sideways. And the whole team's part of the field is around. Caution flag is out. Ryan Andrew has the scoring loop. That was close. I mean, we talked about it, you know, Kobe gets a good jump here. He can maybe get a quick caution. He can hold on you know, through an overtime caution. And we're going to have one green white checker tonight, I do believe. So it's going to be real interesting possibly to see if Kobe stays out. Now on the outside row, doesn't get the jump that he wants. We're going to go back and watch his record. Here. Brandon Schaberko getting helped around, or rather, as he turns down, turns a few. And that collects at least five, six trucks. Joey Masevich having to go through at least three clouds of smoke to avoid contact again. Yeah, Tuberco has not really had a good night. We saw him evolve in that lap 13 uh, wreck with the Dotto. So he's not really having a great night. Uh, really a lot of cars coming up on that. I can mention no fast repairs for any of these drivers involved. I don't think anyone is too terribly torn up. We're going to see some, some slower race cars by sure with a lot of aero damage from that. Uh, but I don't think anyone can be really knocked out of the running. We might have a blown motor. Someone hit the inside wall there pretty hard. I can't quite catch who that was. But it's going to be interesting now as we get ready to restart. I'm assuming it's going to be a green-white checkered, a natural, maybe? I'm not, I don't think it is. I think we're going to go ahead and use our overtime attempt here, just possibly. We'll find out once we get around the next time by. Remember, if it comes down to a trigger G, WC. A caution would end the race. If it's a natural green-white checkered, we could still use the other green-white checkered attempt, the official one, to re-rack and stack them again. So a lot can happen here. Andrew, Jacoby, Hall, Castro, and Ricard is your top five, mind you. So how do you win this race? Now the simple question, four tires up front, two tires inside row one, row two, I should say, all tires outside row one. Yeah, this is a real interesting position for everyone except for Ryan Andrew to be in. If you're Ryan Andrew, I'd uh, go ahead and start getting the champagne ready. Uh, you have, you know, Jason Jacoby on 20 now lap old, plus 20 plus lap old tires on your outside. You don't really expect him to be in any contention here. His best hope is a quick caution, and we go ahead and use our green-white checkered here and end the race, and he can get, you know, maybe a top five. Uh, you got John Hole on two tires. Those two tires might actually be helpful here if Castro can get held up by Jacoby. There's a, there's a lot of interesting ways to play out. I don't think Castro can really do a whole lot here behind Jacoby unless he can send it to the outside real quick and one. But we're only going to have a handful of laps here to get anything done. So to reset... It's Andrew and Jacoby, Hall and Castro, Ricard and Werner, Brumman and Jump, Snyder and Jabo. Once your top rows for this restart. For those curious, the cut line for those wanting to gain I rating about 12 currently. And drivers are already saying they are scared in the heart of the field. We're off to a great start and we haven't even started the restart yet. We've already set the record for the third most cautions. This is, uh, right now, if we can get two more, which I believe this is actually going to be a natural green white checker, so there's a possibility of it. As Jacoby on the 20 lap old tires and Ryan Andrew on the front row, going to make this real interesting. Coming up to the natural green white checkered. Green flag is out. Bad start on the outside. Everybody shoving their way to get alongside Jacoby. Three was, wide in the battle for third. That was not the restart Jacoby wanted at all. He's stuck on the outside. He's going to fall. He's going to fall real fast here, Lightning McQueen style. Stuck on the outside, pass, getting past two, three wide. Hopefully trying to file in in front of Warner there. It's going to be real interesting to see. Everyone's going to get held up behind Jacoby. Is there Ryan Andrew? Do play that beautifully? Hoping to get the white flag this time by. Coming up to said white flag at the stripe. One to go, presented by McCauley Entertainment. Andrew tries to hold off John Hall. Andre Castro looking to set things up as well. Castro wants second. Nearly pokes alongside his fourth on back all right the wall. 
Andre Castro with a pretty solid run, got a little bit loose through one and two there, not quite the run off of two that he wanted. As now David Warner trying to steal that podium spot for Castro. John Hall, not really anything can do. Ryan Andrew looking to steal this one up. Coming out of turn four, Ryan Andrew slides his way up, takes the checker flag, he wins at Homestead, Miami. John Hall second, Castro, Werner, and Brummett, your top five. And Ryan Andrew definitely ran well all night. He led the most laps, gets the job done from the pole. That was exactly the way he needed that play out. He let guys come around him. He didn't race anyone too hard except Castro a little bit, but he was always there at the end. You know, he didn't tear anything up. He might burn up some tires. He got a little bit lucky with those cautions. We saw him kind of start to fade back there through the middle of the run, but Ryan Andrew getting it done tonight. Ryan Andrews started things off slow this season after some early incidents as he looks to try and make the rally for a battle for the championship this season. So Ryan Andrew picks up the W today here on McCauley Entertainment NC Fixed Action. Let's take a look at your official race results as all drivers have crossed the stripe. Ryan Andrew in the midst of the burnout as he picks up the win by two tenths over John Hall. He started third in this one. Andre Castro also started top three, finished top three. David Winner finishes in fourth, Dean Brummett in fifth. Scott Ricard alongside Jacob Snyder, sixth and seventh. Nathan Jump having a very strong run tonight in Division Two. He finishes eighth. Hunter Brito goes from 20th to 9th at the checkered. And Joey Misavich rounds out your top ten. Derek Winter there going round out the 11th. Well, I want to give a shout out to him. Picked up 11 spots. Real solid run there from Derek Winter. Justin or J Bo ending up in 12th. Jason Jacoby. We saw try to stay out. Tried to make some magic happen. Wasn't quite able to seal a deal. Going to finish in the 13th tonight after starting 19th. Cole Pawkin going to be 14th. Lucas Adato in that lap 13 direct we saw early on. Going to be 15th. Dalton Cowden 16th. Ham Schwartz, Heller, McConey. Is going to round out your top 20. 21st, Kyle Brawley, very quietly with 12th to 21st. Brent Jaberko, after several incidents, 22nd is where he ends. Yakov Kurasinov finishes DNF, as well as Brady Powers here in this one. We'll take a quick step aside when we come back. Post race coverage here on McConey Entertainment. You're watching the McConey Setup Shop C Fix Series SOF Race from Homestead, Miami. When you want to be the best, you can't settle for the rest. For anything on iRacing, there's just one name you need, Makoni. With the launch of Makoni Entertainment and Makoni Competizone alongside Makoni Setup Shop, we now provide the best of the best in setups, paint schemes, coaching, broadcasting, and event organization. With cars across all four license classes, we have what you need to hit the track with confidence. Grab a subscription and save money while going fast at MaconeySetupShop.com forward slash subscriptions. And remember, at Maconey Setup Shop, there are setups, but your victories. Welcome back to tonight's coverage of the McConey Setup Shop C Fix Series. Next time out for this series, we head to a paperclip, Martinsville Speedway, Brayton. And that's expected to be a very busy night for our drivers in that everyone wants to make contact. Right in the heart of Bump and Run Valley, gonna be very interesting next weekend for week seven going to be interesting to see who can really can, you know, handle a short track. We haven't gone to too many short tracks for this season. So the real test of endurance, skill, and determination coming next week. We'll see how that plays out. October the 23rd is that set date. That coverage starts at 8.15 p.m. Eastern Time. How many cautions will we get? Will it be over and under 20? We'll find out if we manage to break some world records. On that note, though, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to tonight's coverage from Homestead Miami Speedway to our race sponsor, McConey Setup Shop, as well as our broadcast partner, McConey Competition. Coming to action tonight was myself, Justin Prince, alongside Brayden Lester, the booth with Bradley Cooper producing. Thanks to our viewers for watching tonight's action, and we hope you stay tuned to all of our social media pages for our next race. 
Thanks to the entire staff for their work and bringing this racing to you. This has been a production of McConey Entertainment. We'll see you next time.